Urban Zen for me is sort of finding the calm and the chaos. And I think in the world we live in today, there's just so much chaos on so many different levels. So what I wanted to create was to bring like-minded people together who really want to make a difference in this world. You know, in the chaos of, of disease, where's the calm in it? You know, how do we calm ourselves to get to the point that we can deal with the disease? That, for me, is why we're all here today. And when Stephen got ill, we went and had a relationship at Sloan Kettering, and he had lung cancer. But I realized this journey was so, everything was specialized. There was something missing. We needed to find a complementary way of how we were going to deal with the disease, that it was not only being attacked from a Western point of view, but how we were going to help him through Chinese herbs and acupuncture and yoga and, and all these wonderful modalities that really supported his sickness and also supported us as a family. And that was very important. So I had to navigate the path for him. So I always felt there needed to be that one person that each patient is assigned for to go through the journey. So goodbye. It's been lovely seeing you. See you soon. Hasta luego and whatever. So on Stephen's journey, it was one thing, and then on Lynn's, the journey got very complicated. First it was breast, then it was brain, and two different specialists. How do we hold it together? We're naive. You have to, for me, I had to recognize my own power to choose. And choice was, is a big thing in the, in the entire universe, that you get to choose what you do. No one chooses really for you. You get to be happy, you get to be set, you get to have be in uh, pain and suffer from that, or you were in pain and you just recognize you're in pain and you live with pain. All these are choices that you make yourself, and I think the same is true of uh, uh, integrating East and West. If that's really what you need, it should totally be available in a hospital there to have it. Ask me your questions. Oh, let's go back to the I survived, and I don't really like to call it survived because you just, especially with brain cancer, you really never know if you're a survivor or you're not a survivor. But today, because I look at every day, I am a survivor, and I sit here with you as a miracle. You put your hope and your, your power into coming out the other side, because when you come out the other side, it's, it's just you're born again. We're here to celebrate you and hopefully celebrate all those peoples and lives you've already touched and will continue to touch. Which is amazing to me, to touch more than myself, which is already incredible. Oh, what an amazing miracle that you created for me. That happens. Thank you. It's funny, I have not talked about this really. It, it's certainly not in public at all, and it's still, it's been almost four years, and it's still, you know, it comes back in a second. To sit in a doctor's office and have them say those words to you, you have cancer. From that moment on, nothing is the same. I was in a, a mammo, uh, having a mammogram in an office in, in Chinatown, and they were all Chinese, and my doctor's half Chinese because I like the half and half, but obviously it was quite difficult because there was like 400 of them in there, they're all screaming, and my card wasn't working, and nobody could understand my accent, and I was that close to going. 
I remember in that moment thinking, if I could do anything to just back time up to before I heard those words, you know what I mean? To, maybe I would change my mind, not get this biopsy, just go back to a time that, where, there was, where I was just not overwhelmed with fear. I feel blessed, I feel blessed that my life, I get to sit and hear and take in and be changed by and be disturbed by and weep over and laugh over other people's suffering. That's the great gift. That's the great gift. The painful life is a life where you're alone and you don't inhale people and you don't take in people and you don't see people and you become progressively isolated and shut down and deadened and deadened and deadened until you have no reason to be here anymore. In the end, when it all happened and I went up to the hospital and everything, there just never seemed to be somebody there to like sit down and talk. Everybody was so, um, like, they, it was like rehearsed. Everybody had, like, you do this and you go over here and you do that. And I see the sort of, you know, the very competent doctor come in and the nurses and, you know, but they don't, you know, unless they sit themselves on a table for their four-month checkup after they've had cancer and you don't know if they're going to find more, and until they've gone through it themselves, they don't know the level of panic. I don't know, it's like trying to, how do you teach somebody bedside manner, do you know? How do you teach that? I mean, my doctors were all great, but they were like coal miners, you know? They were like, I'll oh, climb a Klusky in here. And I'd be like, you know, get your tits out. And it'd be like, oh, I'm so Scottish, you know? And they'd be like, oh, these people everywhere. And I was like, oh. And do you mind if we bring in some students? And there'd be like 10 students. And I'm like, oh, it's a nightmare. It was really a nightmare. Most people don't want you to come in and fix them. Most people don't want, and, and I think this is true medically as well. Most people want you to hear them and care for them so that they can find the wherewithal in their own systems to become immune, to build up their immunity, to create their strength, to create their know-how, to create their vision of the world. And that comes from another person witnessing you, honoring you, bearing witness to your pain, sitting with your struggle. Um, that's what healing is. I'm a sentient human going through a very difficult experience. I am not just this walking cancer person, you know? I'm a, I'm a you know, ridiculously sensitive human who's terrified. There is a definitely coldness to the institution of, um, of medicine, which I think, you know, so many of us have experienced and, and want to have changed. Um, I mean, I think the place itself needs to change, and we've talked about this, you know, just the space itself, like how it can, feel like a more comfortable place. You go to the hospital and they're just about trying to kill you with not only the nutrition but your lack of sleep. I, I, you get, if you want to be in the hospital, that means that you, know, you really want to get sicker. <laughs> <laughs> Both my parents had just had hospitalizations in the last year. I, I, I had like a grilled cheese sandwich and a piece of white bread and I'm right. thinking, what the, are you kidding? He just had a heart attack for Christ's sake. You could, be, you could be talking more about nutrition and diet and all these things that they say, they just they say, well, you know, you know, eat well. And you know, you don't have the time. I think that my father could have had a better experience, a much better experience, and I wish I could have facilitated that. And I feel like I can help uh, now to facilitate that, having gone through his experience, but also um, with the people that I, that I know and the the access that we have as a group, that idea of being part of this community, which I think this now, this is a movement. You know, I am I'm so grateful to be where I am and to be healthy and, and when there are people who, you know, haven't been as lucky. But I think there are ways to, you know, I have no doubt there are ways to heal more people and to heal the same people maybe more effectively. Um, I've talked to a lot of people that are um, told that, you know, they would six months and they're still alive 20 years later. So it's nothing, there's no, it's all about in, in here. It's all about the, in, in, the, the inside of you. It's all about the inside of you because I think you can actually keep yourself alive. I do, I think you can fight it. There's something wrong with our medical system. You know, we're caring for the disease, but where are we caring for the patient? Where are we caring for the loved ones? It sort of became an obsession of mine. I, I just felt that I had to do something about it. And to think that I had an idea and I didn't do everything I could have possibly done to make a difference, I couldn't get up every morning. <laughs> Just who I am.